Aberdeen is a city off the northeast coast of Scotland, home to approximately 217,000 residents. During the 18th to mid 20th centuries, Aberdeen was famous for its granite mines and was nicknamed the Silver City until the discovery of liquid gold in the 1970s. Since the discovery of oil in the North Sea, Aberdeen has been given a new nickname, the energy capital of Europe. One of the first companies to tap into this rich oil reserve was Occidental Petroleum, which is owned by the Opcal Joint Venture. It is an international oil and gas exploration and production company with operations in the United States, Eastern Europe, the Middle East region, and Latin America. Headquartered in Houston, Texas, Occidental is one of the largest U.S. oil and gas companies based on equity market capitalization. Occidental's midstream and marketing segment gathers, processes, transports, stores, purchases, and markets hydrocarbons and other commodities in support of Occidental's businesses. Occidental went all out in the construction of the first Piper oil field ring, calling her the Piper Alpha, erecting her around 273 kilometers northeast of Aberdeen. Standing at around 300 meters high and weighing close to 14,000 tons, she was a behemoth of engineering, able to accommodate 226 workers and produce 300,000 barrels of crude oil per day. Her area of expertise expanded as she started piping natural gas and liquid condensate. Then, at 10 p.m. on July 6, 1988, after a standard maintenance overhaul routine, the entire petroleum world shook as from the waves of the North Sea erupted one of the largest rig disasters known to man. Now, we go behind the scenes, getting the real-life info from survivors, management, and investigators as we discover what really happened on the Piper Alpha. Occidental stress on production, reputation, and profit paved the way for the series of thoughts and values that unfolded in the minds of the rig workers. These snowballed into events that ultimately led to disaster, as described by former rig worker and survivor, Billy Clayton. On the night of the disaster, like any other shift, we began to prepare ourselves for a shift change at 6 p.m. So we got on the rig floor at Module C began to familiarize ourselves with the night's nice procedures and operations and began to monitor production. After about three hours or so, the pump that was producing shut down. So we followed regular procedure to have the pump working again, but it just won't start. After a few minutes, we got the word from the lead production officer to start up pump two. So said, so done, pump 2 was started and within minutes we began hearing alarms. Now, these alarms were indicating to us that there were gas leaks. So while trying to locate the source of these leaks, boom, the loudest explosion I've ever heard. Everyone started running, everyone started screaming. It was chaos. The culture on the rig was created as an extension of the culture within the Occidental Petroleum Company. Frightening revelations, as brought to light by Ms. Anita Powers, highlight the external challenges placed on Piper Alpha's rig workers. There were not many external challenges in the Piper Alpha disaster. Basically, Britain's safety department was in control of safety on the rig and their main concern was uninterrupted production. North Sea Oil was the pride of Britain and the country earned huge profits off of its production. Also, Piper Alpha produced 10% of all North Sea Oil. So in addition to pressure from management, Rig workers also had to deal with the added encouragement or pressure from Britain's central government to always produce more. 
first-hand evidence of the culture amongst workers on the Piper Alpha is described by former engineer and survivor Dave Lambert. At Piper, safety was a consideration. However, it was taken for granted. The main focus was on maintaining the high production which led to less focus in the safety. So what really led to the death of over 150 crew members and rescue workers? What key factors resulted in the sinking of the Piper Alpha? One theory as analyzed by Deborah Rubin, panel member on the Lord Cullen Public Inquiry, explores the realm of hegemon and key attitudes. After examination of the events leading up to the Piper Alpha disaster, I've come to the conclusion that the value system of many of the engineers was not the strongest. They were very careless in many of the decisions they made. This was evident in one instance where we saw that a work permit for the valve was not signed off by the operations manager for the morning shift because it was claimed that he was too busy. The engineer didn't consider the outcome his decision might have. This miscommunication led to a catastrophe. In terms of management, their hegemon was definitely profit as well as status because they had a reputation to uphold. We know that during maintenance exercises, drilling and production operations should be stopped. But this did not happen because management were very keen on production rates. They did not want any downtime because this would obviously mean less profit. In terms of the engineers, I believe they were focused on self-preservation because they could have made decisions after the first explosion but they chose not to, maybe because of a fear of losing their jobs. This definitely went against the code of conduct of engineers. What really bothered me was the fact that the lead production operator signed for the pump that was supposed to be under maintenance to be used in order to continue production. Now this shows me that they didn't observe proper working protocol and also they totally disregarded the safety of our co-workers. But as they say, at the end of the day, Everyone wanted to produce and everyone wanted to keep their jobs. The series of ethics, attitudes, assumptions, actions and domino effect events were all catalysts in this perfect storm, resulting in the demise of scores of human lives and billions of dollars. So what could have been done to avert this disaster? What could have Occidental Petroleum and Piper Alpha Rig workers done differently to save the lives of the 150 plus workers and rescuers. From an ethical standpoint, I definitely think the disaster could have been prevented. One of the main issues, and in my opinion, probably the most important issue, was that of miscommunication. You saw where the engineer failed to have a permit signed by the operations manager because he claimed that he was too busy. This is definitely not acceptable. Also, for the evening shift, decisions were made without clarifying the necessary information about the pump. There was also an issue of untrained personnel on Bipod, in that there was a supervisor who had not been given any prior training at that point. It was also his first time playing that role at night and he had made some decisions that led to the disaster on Piper. This raises the issue of properly training workers for these major responsibility and decision making roles. From a management point of view, any member of staff should have been able to shut off the gas supply after the first explosion. If this had occurred, 
then the second of exposure would not have occurred and the dental would have been much better and more efficient emergency and fire drills could have been put in place as well as more than one emergency fire alarms. Furthermore, all workers should have been trained in emergency procedures and firefighting techniques. As an aspiring engineer, I put all the teachers in practice along the lines of safety in that not to make assumptions and not to be laid back because I have safety as a major part of my value system. Yeah, I agree with what you say. And then too, I think like as all of us here are engineers, aspiring engineers. And then so I think like if we allow ourselves to become immersed in the culture of the companies that we get involved in, that can kind of lead to complacency amongst us, which could then actually develop into probably similar, hopefully not worse disasters than the pipeline of a uh, disaster. And you know that could really is really something to pay attention to as we go out into the world of the so um, the Piper Alpha disaster was yet another eye-opener, just similarly to other case studies that we looked at. True. In terms of um, where we saw where any time profit is put as the organization's main priority and safety is um, somewhat overlooked or thought of as being less important, we saw where every time it resulted in disaster. And also we saw where it's not necessarily technical aspects that actually cause a disaster, but very simple um, human errors or even just simple decisions made by humans or employees of these organizations. For me, the main impact of the disaster was just to remember that news regulations and safety procedures are put in place for a reason and we must also we must always remember that these are there to follow for our safety. Significant improvements have been made in the UK offshore industry since Piper Alpha. These include improvements in both the hardware and in the safety culture of the industry. However, we cannot become complacent. The launch of step change in safety was designed to continue the post Piper Alpha improvements and drive greater improvement and workforce involvement. Let the souls of the 166 victims of Piper Alpha continue to rest in peace.